There are a lot of great custom RTX 3080s out there, but which one is the absolute best? Well, let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So for this video, I've gone ahead and put together a list of what I believe are the top five best custom RTX 3080 designs on the market right now, based upon mostly the power delivery as well as the overall build quality of each of these cards. Now, before we get into this list, I just wanna say that I got all the power delivery numbers from a website called techpowerup.com and they do really, really great reviews. So I highly suggest you go ahead and click those links in the description below and go support their website. But in any case, let's go ahead and take a look at that list starting at number five and working our way to number one, which which I consider to be the absolute best card on the market right now. So starting at number five, we have the MSI Gaming X Trio. And if you really want to, you could throw in a whole number of different cards here at number five, as there's a lot of great designs. But I decided to go with the MSI Gaming X Trio because not only does it have a big, nice cooler, but it also looks really good as well. Now, this card comes in at $760, so it does have a small premium over the retail price. It is a three-slot design. It has three eight pins, which by the way, that third eight pin is pretty much useless because this thing has a power limit of 350 watts in MSI Afterburner, and it has a 13 plus three phase VRM design with 13 of them going to the GPU and three going to the memory. Now, as for capacitors, it has two MLCCs on the back and it has four SP caps. Now, the reason why this is important is because the MLCCs tend to do a little bit higher at slightly higher frequencies. So if your focus is overclocking with these cards, having more MLCCs or at least very high quality SP caps is very important. Now, overall, this card is actually pretty good, but I'm a little bit disappointed because I think MSI had an opportunity here to make a really, really great card, and they only ended up making one that was actually just good. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, looking at the fact that they have three 8-pins on here, that the third one's pretty much useless because it has a BIOS limit of only 350 watts, which, by the way, is actually a little bit less than the Founders Edition, and on top of that, they have a power delivery system that's also just not quite as good as the Founders Edition, is a little bit disappointing, and the cooler on it's better than the Founders Edition, so I think if they had, you know, gone with a... 15 plus 4 VRM and then unlock the power limit to like 375 watts at least I think this card could have been a whole lot better and on top of it It doesn't have a dual BIOS switch So if you're wanting to go ahead and flash the BIOS on this card and you screw it up Well, you're kind of SOL now moving on to number four We have the Asus tough gaming OC RTX 3080 and this one comes in at a price of $730 and I really like this card because it gives you really great value for your money and I think this card is significantly better than the gaming X trio in a lot of ways. Now this is another three slot card, but it only comes with two eight pin connectors, which honestly is more than enough. In MSI Afterburner, it has a power limit of 375 watts, and it has a 16 plus 4 phase VRM with 16 going to the GPU and 4 to the memory. Now, as for the capacitors, it has 6 MLCCs, which means that this card should be capable of slightly higher clock speeds when overclocking, hopefully. And you know, overall, I think that this graphics card represents the best value in the entire group, because not only is it, you know, a, only a small premium at $730 over the $700 MSRP, but on top of that, you can get the non-OC model for $700, which I believe there really is isn't any difference between the two, but keep in mind there is a possibility that there is a little difference. And on top of that, it comes with a dual BIOS switch, so if you did want to go ahead and do some, you know, modifying on this card, it's going to be a lot easier. Now coming in at number three, we have the EVGA For The Win 3 Ultra, and this card comes in at a price of $810, so it's definitely a whole lot more spendy. It is also a three-slot card with three eight-pin connectors, but here's where things get a little bit different. This one actually has a power limit that's all the way up to 420 watts, so that's that's a pretty huge increase and should allow for higher overclocking. Now, as for the VRMs, I'm not entirely sure because I actually couldn't find any information on them, but I can say that you know, seeing as how the power limit's much higher, I think that we can expect that the VRMs on EVGA's premium design card is going to be a lot better than the majority of the RTX 3080s on the market. Now, as for the capacitors, it has two MLCCs and four SP caps, just like the Gaming X Trio. And overall, you know, I think that if you're willing to spend a little bit more and you want a very premium design RTX 3080, this one's actually a pretty good deal because yes, it's kind of expensive at $810, but the other two cards coming after this are actually even a lot more expensive. So to get a card that has a much higher power limit out of the box and is probably gonna be one of the top performers for 810 bucks, I think that's actually not too bad of a deal. And personally, I'd really love to try and get my hands on this one. 
Now coming in at number two, we have the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme, and this one should be coming in at a price somewhere between $850 to $900. I don't entirely know yet because the Aorus Master is on the market for $850, and the Aorus Extreme has an extra 8-pin in, possibly better internals, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit more expensive. Now this one comes in at a behemoth four slots. That's right, you heard me correctly, four slots, and it too has three 8-pin connectors. Now this one, I can't really nail down the power limit, VRMs, or capacitors, but again, since it's Gigabyte's premium design card, I would expect this thing to have a pretty high power limit and pretty great VRM capacitor designs, but that's something we don't really know for sure yet. That's just what I'm expecting. Now, what I really do like about this card is that, you know, not only is it just a behemoth of a card and it should keep your uh, GPU very, very cool, but on top of that, it actually has three HDMI and three display ports on the back. So to me, it's like if you're going to be closing off the back side of your card because, you know, realistically, it doesn't provide too much cooling performance if your air is going this way and not that way. Well, you might as well put something there. And so I like the fact that Gigabyte decided to put a whole bunch of connectors there that actually makes sense. Now, finally, at number one, we have the Asus ROG Strix RTX 3080. Now this card comes in at a price of $850, so it's very expensive just like the last two. It is also a three slot design and it too has three eight pin connectors. Now this one supposedly is gonna have up to a 480 watt limit. Now that was the limit on the RTX 3090 Strix. It might be a little bit different for this one, but from what I've heard so far, that's where it should be. Uh, if it doesn't hit that, I would assume that it hits you know, at least 400 watts, but I'm expecting 480 watts, which is absolutely insane for a video card. And you you definitely should not need to flash the BIOS on this one because if you're pushing more than 480 watts, you better be using liquid nitrogen. Now, as for the VRMs, this card comes with an 18 plus 4 design, so that gives you a total of 22, 18 for the GPU, and 4 for the memory. So the, I think that's the beefiest design on the entire list so far. And for the capacitors, it, just like the Tough Gaming, has 6 MLCC caps, so you should, in theory, be able to hit slightly higher clocks on this card. Now, overall, I decided to choose this card because, you know, it is very expensive coming in at $150 but the overall design of this card I think is the best in this entire list and on top of that I think that the overall build quality of this card is just top notch and you know maybe the Aorus Extreme will end up being a little bit better but it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive so I feel like if you're going out to spend big money on a graphics card uh, on an RTX 3080 at least I believe that this is probably going to end up being the best RTX 3080 on the market especially if it ends up having that 480 watt power limit because although you probably won't really need much more than 400 watts for this graphics card it's really nice to have that ability in case you want to push it to its absolute limits. Now, personally, I've had two cards in SLI before that drew around 500 watts, and I can tell you from experience that you don't really want to be drawing 500 watts while gaming all the time in a small room. You're going to turn that room into an oven, but if you're crazy enough and you do really want to do it, this card gives you the ability to do so, and it also gives you a VRM design that can handle it. So yeah, I think that the Asus Strix RTX 3080 is the best model on the market right now, though there are some new ones coming out in the near future. I think uh, EVGA is even going to have like a hybrid cooled one. They're going to have a 240 millimeter version for the RTX 3080 and a 360 millimeter uh, radiator water cooled version for the RTX 3090. So if they do those ones correctly, those could end up actually being the best cards in the market. But right now, I really like this one. It's the one I have my eyes on. It's the one I'm going to be trying to get. But in all reality, since there's basically no stock and there's just crazy amounts of demand i'll probably never be able to get one but here's hoping but hey that's just what i think which card do you think is the best card in the market i'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below and of course i'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so nvidia and intel drop prices also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed